This lesson will be discussing piecewise functions. Before we begin, there's one thing to review, and that is inequalities. So we look at our top one. This is so how we read this. Is remember that we always eat the bigger number. So if I read this from the left to the right, this says x is less than or equal to 4. Okay. Our next one. Whenever you see two numbers, all it means is that x is in between 0 and 4. And you might have to keep an eye on if it has an equal sign underneath or not. So what this is saying is this is saying x is greater than 0, less than, x is less than 4. Or you can think about it as it's in, x is in between 0 and 4. So whenever you see two numbers on the outside, that is what x is sandwiched in between. And the last one to review, this is when I read from left to right, x is greater than 6. Okay, so less than or equal to, remember that line underneath, okay, and this symbol is greater than, no line underneath, means it's not equal to. We get into piecewise functions, okay, for instance, movie ticket prices are often different for different age groups. You've got children prices or adult prices. Another example could be cell phone rates. Depending on how much data you use or how many minutes you buy or any other variable that comes to mind when purchasing a cell phone. Piecewise function, all it is, it just looks like two pieces of a graph. So these are two lines graphed on the same xy coordinate plane, okay, where one of these lines goes one direction, it gets cut off, and the other line appears. So piecewise functions are going to be two pieces of a graph that we're going to see. Before we get into actually graphing these things, we're going to discuss how to evaluate these functions. So this is function notation. So we're trying to evaluate f of negative 4, meaning when x is negative 4, what is y? Well, we have this f of x equals 5x minus 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 2, and x squared plus 4 if x is greater than negative 2. So we just need to determine where does negative 4 fall? Is negative 4 less than negative 2 or bigger than negative 2? In this case, negative 4 would be less than negative 2. Therefore, we're going to use 5x minus 1. So to find f of negative 4, all we need to do is plug in negative 4 for x. So we get 5 times negative 4 minus 1. f of negative 4 equals negative 20 minus 1, negative 21. Let's try example two. We gotta figure out where does negative two fall? Well, I see negative two twice here. Okay, this is x is less x is less than or equal to negative two. And on the bottom here we have x is greater than negative two. Well, my f of x, my f of negative two, that is equal, so we're gonna use the same equation. So f of negative two is gonna be five x minus one. So we get 5 times negative 2 minus 1, negative 10 minus 1 equals negative 11. Same functions as the previous slide. You'll notice everything is the same. 
Now we need to evaluate and figure out for f of 0. First we decide which one does 0 lie on. Is it less than negative 2 or is it bigger than negative 2? 0 is most definitely bigger than negative 2. So this time we are going to evaluate x squared plus 4. So f of 0 equals 0 to the second power plus 4. We get f of 0 equals 4. The last one, 4. 4 is most definitely bigger than negative 2, so we're going to use that same equation, our x squared plus 4. So f of 4 equals, I'm just plugging in 4 for x, or the second power plus 4, f of 4 equals 16 plus 4, which is 20. So when you're to evaluate these, all you have to do is figure out where does it lie. You look at what the x value is, if it, whatever number it is, and decide which inequality does it satisfy. And that is the equation you would use. Let's get into some graphing. So to graph piecewise functions, you got two things you need to do. Figure out, one, how many pieces are there? Essentially, how many equations? Two, create tables for each piece and then graph. So for example, we've got 3x plus 3 if x is less than 0, and two, negative 2x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 0. So I see two pieces. 3x plus 3, if x is less than or equal to 0. And I also see negative 2x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to make two tables. I'm going to start with g of x equals 3x plus 3. This is when x is less than 0. I'm just going to make a note of that. So let's create an xy table here. You're wondering, what x values do I pick? Well, I'm going to start with this x value of 0 and pick numbers that are less than 0. So let's go with negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. You're never going to be told the x values to pick. You just start at this number and pick numbers that are either less than or greater than, depending on what the inequality says. So now I'm going to plug in 0 for x, so 3 times 0 plus 3. That's going to leave me with a 3 for this y. Then I'm going to plug negative 1 into the equation. So 3 times negative 1 plus 3. That's negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3 times negative 2 plus 3. You get negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. And negative 3 times negative 3 plus 3. I'm plugging in negative 3 into my equation. I get, pardon me, this should not be a negative here. So we have 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9, plus 3 is negative 6. There's my table values. I'm going to erase this so I can have space. Okay. But I can take these values now and I can graph. Notice how there's no equal sign here, which means open circle on the graph. So at 0, 3. So 0, up 3. I'm going to make a circle there. Mine's not exact. It's hard to get my finger exactly on that. So next point, negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 0 is about right there. Okay, negative 2, negative 3, so negative 2, negative 3, and the last one, negative 3, negative 6. So negative 3, come on down to 6, and I can do my best to draw a nice straight line. I better error than that. So there's graph number 1 for piece number 1. 
Now we've got piece number two. Negative 2x plus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to xy table again. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to start with this number, 0. Now I'm going to pick numbers bigger than 0. So 1, 2, 3. I'm going to plug them into the equation. So we've got, I'm going to go over here. So the first one is negative 2 times 0 plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. And we've got negative 2 times 1 plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And I've got negative 2 times 2 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 would be negative 2. And negative 2 times 3 plus 2. We get negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Again, let me erase this so I get some space to graph over here. So plot my points, 0, 2, because of this equal sign right there, I'm going to be able to fill in a solid circle. Now continue, 1, 0, so here's 1, 0, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 4, you can get closer than that, sorry. And we connect our dots, and there's my pieces. I had two equations, so I have two pieces in the graph. So let's take a peek at <clears throat> this example. We have f of x equals negative 2x minus 5 if x is less than 2. And we have x squared minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So again, we've got one piece. And we have a second piece. So there's going to be two graphs. And I'm going to, there's going to be two equations that I'm going to graph. So I'm going to start with the top one. We have negative 2x minus 5 when x is less than 2. And make our xy table. So I'm going to start with 2. And I need to pick values that are less than 2. So let's try 1, 0, and negative 1. That looks like a 7. I'll do that. Negative 1. Again, now we just plug it in. So we have negative 2 times x. x is 2 minus 5. So that's negative 4 minus 5. It's negative 9. Okay, now we've got negative 2 times 1. Plug it in there. That would be negative 3, or negative 2 minus 5. Sorry, negative 2 minus 5 would be negative 7. Now we've got negative 2 times 0 minus 5. 0 would be negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 1 minus 5, that's a positive 2. Minus 5 would be negative 3. So there's my first table. And now I can go through and plot those points. So over 2, down 9, 2, negative 9. Oh, that's off. Close enough, right? 2, negative 9. Come around there, I'll try that again. It's hard to get my finger right on the point. 2, negative 9. There you go. 1, negative 7. Zero, negative 5. And negative 1, negative 3. Close enough. Make my line. There is my graph. Now, what I didn't do was show you that there's no equal sign at this 2. So this 2, negative 9 point, there needs to be an open circle. So right here I can make a note. Open circle. We can go on to our second piece of the, of the puzzle. So, erase that so I have a little more space. x squared minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So we're going to start with our xy table. OK. 
right? So start with two for our x value and pick numbers that are bigger than two. Any numbers, three, four, five. And now you're gonna plug it in. So we have two squared minus three. Four minus three is one. And we have three squared minus three. Nine minus three, six. Four squared minus three, 16 minus three, 13. And then five squared minus three, 25 minus three would be 22. Now notice those numbers are big. Okay. They're not going to fit on the graph and that's okay. As long as you remember that when you have a power of two, it is a parabola. So we're gonna start by plotting two, one, and we can put a closed circle right there. Then we're gonna plot three up six. Two, right there. And now this one, four thirteen. So if I go over to four, I know that top part's ten. I'm going to estimate where 13 is. Okay, that's a little off. I'll try that again. Probably about right there. And now I can make my graph look like that. There's my two pieces, so I have two graphs. If this is still not making sense to you, call Mr. Ryan over, write this example down and have him go through because now this one you would need one piece so that's one table here's a second piece so two tables and lastly you have a third table so I would like you to try to graph this on your own call Mr. Ryan over call me over ask for help See if you can do this one on your own.